I'm Tim, the Woodworking Maniac, and in this video I'm going to show you how I built this massive lumber rack. This is actually a lumber rack, sheet goods rack, cutoff storage, all in a mobile cart. And I built it into a mobile cart, so I didn't necessarily dedicate just a wall space for my lumber rack, and then actually have to build a, a cart for my sheet goods storage and everything as a separate separate deal. I wanted it all in one, so if I did end up getting a tool to take up the space for this wall, I can end up moving this to another portion of my shop. And if it needed to be into a center portion of the shop, it could be a two-sided uh, dedicated piece all on its own. So that's the reason I built it in this way. But if you wanna see how I ended up making this thing, follow along. It's a little bit longer of a video, but this was a pretty massive build. So check it out and I hope you enjoy it. Started off by cutting uh, up a four by eight sheet of plywood and I cut the main base. The main base was a full eight foot long and 40 inches wide. Once I cut the 40 inch wide piece, I then used the cutoff of that and cut off a one inch wide piece. And the one inch wide piece will actually be attached to it at one side uh, to be a stop for the sheet goods. Uh, I jointed one edge of all my 2 by material just to uh, get a flat edge and then I cut the other side on my table saw. All of my 2 by 6 material I made uh, down to 5 and a quarter inches wide and all of my 2 by 4 material I made down to 3 and a quarter inches wide. And I don't have my dust collection hooked up to my joiner yet, so it made a big old mess. And this was only about a quarter of the way through all of my material. So I set up a stop block to where I could uh, run the 2x6 in with my table saw and not actually quite cut to the line. And then I could cut the taper on the other end and cut almost to uh, the matching line and then I could finish that up with just a flush cut saw to match those two up and that worked out perfectly fine just to match those two up because I had a tapered in and then the flat in so I should have drilled all of the holes for the EMT tubing before I actually cut the angles for the board. And I had planned on doing that, but I got a little overzealous and got into cutting the angles beforehand and then realized about halfway through that that I hadn't drilled the holes yet. So that ended up causing me to have to set up my uh, drilling at two different angles uh, going through this. Whereas I could have set up my uh, fence or set up my drilling to be just one angle and dealt with that throughout the entire process. But I drilled my holes at about a three degree incline, just so when I put the EMT in there, they were slightly at an angle. So when I, once I put some weight on there, it could, it, it could have a little leeway. I set up my dado stack with, with the thickest that I could go with and got it set to cut an inch and a half deep. And I made kind of a, a quick lead using a cut off piece of 2x6 and attach that to my miter gauge and with this it was giving me somewhat of a zero clearance but also showing me exactly where the dado stack was going to cut on the left and the right of the blade. By doing that I can see exactly where I was cutting so I could quickly just draw out um, the section that I was wanting to cut out of my, of my boards and just take the material out. So you can see right here uh, it, it fit right off the bat just by drawing it out. So here's a view that you can actually see what I'm seeing there. I had the lines drawn out and I could see on the left side that I, I need to stop at that line and then I could see on the right side that I need to stop at that line. And once I cut those two pieces out I merely just cut out what was in the middle and I was done. I did that on all the boards. It worked out perfectly fine. And it didn't need to be exactly perfect because let's face it, this is just a shop project so it just needed to be cut out. And I did the same exact thing for the, the base because I was needing to cut out uh, the two by six area at the bottom as well. Uh, 
I was cutting out for the the box area I had in the bottom. These were all 22 inch deep, so I started off cutting the sheet good at 22 inches, and then cut off a bunch of shelves, and then a bunch of sides, and then I put in my dado stack again, set up my dado stack to cut in grooves to fit the shelves, and I cut a groove in for one of the sides, and then I cut grooves for each center section, which would end up getting a groove on both sides of it, and just kind of buzzed right through all of those. And then I decided this one was going to be for the side because I like the actual look of the outer part of that one, so I set that one aside, being that I just cut the groove on one side of it. So then buzzed through the rest of these, cutting the groove on both sides of them. Now, I bought this, uh, the K5 um, pocket hole jig before Christmas, and I just now got it out of the box. This is the first time I've ever used uh, this pocket hole jig, and I thought this was perfect timing to use it just because I needed to get these things just put together. So the way I decided to set this up, uh, I put pocket holes on each of these, and I did it all on one side. This way, when I was piecing it together, I could actually put the end piece on and put the um, shelf in the center. So I got the end piece together and then I would put a shelf in the center, glue that in, and then I'd put the next one on and with the pocket holes, kind of square it up. Once I got it squared up, put the pocket hole uh, screws in and then move on to the next one and just work my way all the way down the line. And this worked out perfectly. It actually moved along very quick. So I was very happy with this idea. And like I said, this is the first time I ever used pocket holes. And for chop furniture like this, this worked out great. Uh, it was definitely plenty strong. So I was rather impressed with it. it. Worked out just fine for this. So, like I was saying, see all that lumber that I have right there in the middle of my shop taking up all that room? <laughs> yeah, about to clear up a lot of space. Can't wait to get this thing built at this point. So for the last shelf, I actually didn't cut that one uh, at the beginning. I knew that it was going to be dependent on how everything else put, uh, went together. So once I was done putting the rest of them together, I measured to see exactly what length it needed to be, and then I cut that one. And I cut that one to length, and then pieced that one in. Now I only had the 6 inch uh, driver for the Craig jig, uh, which is what came with the set. And I know there's a 3 inch driver that's available and I probably should have ordered that. I think I'm going to have to order that one uh, because my 6 inch driver would not fit in here. Uh, luckily I had a different driver uh, for it, which was just a really shallow one. But uh, my drill still actually wouldn't even fit in there anyway. So I ended up having to use a different uh, uh, impact driver that I had available. Uh, that's actually a small impact driver to fit in the smaller sections like that. So that's what I had to use to kind of piece this thing together. So then I grabbed the, the 40 inch wide base and sat it up here and kind of flipped this right over on top of it. And that fits all the way to the edge. So I just slid that all the way to the edge and screwed this all the way on here. And once that was mounted on, it was uh, ready to go. This thing was pieced together pretty solid. Got this thing on the floor and was able to continue on. So I've got 
the center supports, uh, I'm running three and a half inch uh, deck screws up through the bottom to hold these in. I've got three deck screws going in from the bottom and then I've got pocket hole screws going in from the inside and that's holding it on there plenty strong. Uh, so I've got them flush with one side, basically the side that has the pocket hole screws coming in, that's the side that it's going in flush. This way I can use longer pocket hole screws to go into the actual 2x4 itself. And then I'm using some nice strong deck screws to put in the 2x6s on the bottom and these 2x6s will actually hold the casters themselves. And then I've got some 2x4s with the 2x6 cutouts to support around there as well, which will also support the plywood all the way around. Now these are the casters that I've mounted on here for now, uh, and they're plenty strong, but I'm just not too happy with them. They're, they're not going to be quite strong enough, so I'm, I've ordered some new ones that I'm going to be putting on here soon. So these aren't the ones that, that's going to be staying on there. And then I flipped this thing upright and moved it around. It moved around really easy at this point. I hadn't really had a whole lot of weight on there yet. Uh, the center, all, all these 2x4s here, I ended up basically using a clamp to kind of pull the 2x4s into place and just put two screws into each section there just to give it nice strong support. I'm using half inch MDF for the sheet goods area and I cut an inch off of the end because the MDF comes in 49 by 97 inch lengths and I didn't want it to overhang by an inch so I cut an inch off using just a straight edge and my circular saw. Now for all those holes that I drilled I ended up cutting off uh, pieces of 3 quarter inch EMT tubing to uh, support all of the lumber in this rack. And I'm probably going to end up getting some caps for the ends just to, just to give some extra safety on the ends of these things. But I ended up filing the ends just to make sure they're safe. thing is massive. Uh, there's a ton of weight on here and the casters that I put on it are handling it just fine uh, but it's still kind of hard to move and that's actually my fault. I didn't design it with any place to actually grab a hold of it. So uh, after messing with it some I've, I've realized that actually putting some handles uh, just basically some some areas here where I can grab a hold of it it would actually move very easily. So I'm going to actually, I'm, I'm creating a jig to where I can use a router template and just cut some handle holes at each point in between all of these, these areas here. This way I can pull it out at a corner or I can grab it right here in the center and pull it straight out, uh, which is actually probably what's going to make it the easiest because pushing it straight back into the wall is actually pretty easy. It moves, it moves great just moving all at once. Now moving from a corner, it actually, uh, it, it, it kind of, it, it doesn't, it, it moves okay, but I have to grab it from the center post and stuff like that. It's just kind of hard to grab a hold of. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be putting those handle holds in. And also, I decided to go ahead and upgrade the casters a little bit more. Uh, the casters I put on it, they're solid urethane. And they, they work. They're rated at 330 pounds a piece. And it handles it just fine, but, uh, and, and they move around. But I think I'm probably going to be adding a lot more weight to it once I get some more sheets of plywood to it. And uh, I just want to get better casters. So I decided to go ahead and go with solid metal casters with urethane tires on them. They're rated at double the weight. Uh, I think they're rated, I'm going with 5 inch casters and they're rated for 600 pounds a piece. So they'll be able to handle a lot more weight and I think going with 5 inch casters over the 4 inch casters will just allow it to move that much easier anyway. 
But once those come in here, I'm going to have to unload this entire thing, which is not a fun task, but I'll have to unload this entire thing, put those casters on, and but I think it'll be a big, big plus. So this has made a big improvement in my shop. I needed to get all this lumber out of my way so I can actually continue with my reorganization project that I'm working here because all this lumber was kind of in the middle of my shop where I needed my large machinery to go. I needed my planer and my 24 inch double drum sander to kind of go in the area where this, this lumber was being stored. So now that that's cleared out, I can start continuing on with my, uh, my shop organization here. So hopefully you can see that coming here in the near future, but hope you all enjoyed watching the, the build and hope you all have a great day. So keep on keeping on. God bless.